relation to working with the Chinese, I think um, first it helps to speak the language. But I think uh, that's a starting point as opposed to an ending point. And there's a few factors I think that led to me being, I think, a little bit more effective in that environment than someone who hadn't been there. Number one, you know, we, we talked about the language. So understanding the language helps. And uh, the fact that I'm a trained political professional, that I have a different layer of texture, contextual understanding to the meaning of things from a political perspective gave me a sensitivity to things that may not be automatic for somebody without a political set of lens. So I am politically sensitive to the underlying politics of a situation and, uh, and having a healthy respect for what the boundaries are. It's not about not being not pushing the boundaries. It is about pushing the boundaries, but not beyond the point where it would be politically and culturally rude to do so. And third, and I think this is a real differentiating factor, is that there's a part of me that consi I, I consider myself 100% Chinese. So when I approach a Chinese person over there, I am not coming from a perspective like I am not them. So I, because I hold in my heart that I'm 100% Chinese and 100% American, Simultaneously, that does not create a, a problem for me. The fact is, I'm always relating to them Chinese to Chinese. Regardless of how they may see me, I treat them as one of my own. And in, in many ways, I believe they're my own. So from a from a peer-to-peer -peer relationship, a lot of things are possible. So, and, you know, and the other element which everybody talks about, especially in business, is achieving a win. You know, how can we... So uh, I'm very, very aware of what they want to accomplish. And to the degree that it does not violate my sense of right or wrong uh, and my objectives, I try very, very hard to accomplish that for them. So you know, with some of those as, a guiding, uh, as guiding factors, um, can get a lot done. You know, I found my training as a professional mediator incredibly helpful. And one of the things I had learned as a young kid, um, really wondering about why my parents fought. I think we all had this experience. You know, I listened to my father, like, well, my father's got a point of view, and my mother has a point of view. They only understood each other's points of view in, in a dispassionate moment. Peace in our household can be restored. So I think part that, that perspective partially led me into to having an interest in mediation, because short of having warfare, where one, one side prevailed over the other, it's the only peaceful way of moving two parties forward and restoring harmony. So I think har the, ha the principle of harmony is an incredibly important value that we're only starting to see. And, moder and mediating, mediation is the technique or the process of getting to a harmonious state where we all aspire to be. Um, so what, it, what I learned as a professional mediator was that everybody wants to win. And everybody has a point of view. And being heard and understood by the other person is the beginning of getting there. So, so I, I take that work with me. Now, oftentimes I feel like a mediator between the East and West and Hollywood and China, where, whether it's involved a, sp a particular movie or a game or a property or a conversation. Um, I really do practice those mediation skills. I, I bring them into the fold, except I'm not a dispassionate mediator anymore. Uh, what I'm doing is really bringing those perspectives with me in everything that I do so that we build a platform that both sides can harmoniously share. Well, you know, this is my life. <laughs> I'm glad you brought my wife into it. Yes, I'm, I'm married. My wife is, uh, is Polish, French, American. Um, but it doesn't seem to be, you know, anyways, I, I feel that you find the person you love and you just love them. And culture stops being part of it the moment you fall in love. But as far as my father is concerned, um, I feel like I owe a great deal to my father because had he not been the writer, had he not been such a champion, a passionate champion with his life, of uh, Chinese culture, I would have never had access to the books that I had, the kind of influences I had. So I would say partially I'm, I am successfully integrated as a, as a bicultural person is because I have a good sense of what it means to be Chinese. 
that have a good sense of what it be, means to be American. And I think it starts from there. It starts from having real access. And my father gave me that. Even though I was, bringing up, I was brought up in the US, he brought a whole bouquet of information, of knowledge, of literature, of history, of teachers. And in fact, my father and I still have these discussions. So I attribute my Chinese-ness to him. He is, he's really provided me that opportunity. On my way, starting the day.